In the 41st millennium, there is only war. Captain Kintia, clad in his gravis armor, is scrounging his silver knight force to take on the world eaters. In our previous episodes, Captain Kintia rallied land speeder Mobile for long range scouting and assault intercessor squad Riav for close support. In this episode, He's rallying a 10-man tactical squad of Rebus, the Sergeant armed with a Power Fist, a last cannon for long-range firepower, and a melter gun to tear holes through tanks. Previously, we built the models. We're going to paint them following the same scheme as we did for Assault Intercessor Squad Rear. Tactical Marines are the original backbone of the army prior to the Primaris Marine release. Even now, their array of weaponry has serious potential. We've also had the chance to send Tactical Squad Rebus into battle. They didn't fare so well as they were facing down Anger on the Primarch of the World Eaters. Despite holding a valiant stand, Anger on did bring them down to a man in one round of combat. Regardless, it shows the Tactical Marines' durability remains steadfast. To ensure these Marines are coherent with the other squads, we've gone with exactly the same colour scheme. That's an undercoat of Lead Belcher with really heavy blocking colours such as McCrag Blue, Abaddon Black and Retributor Armour. You know that these colours have awesome pigments and you really don't need that much to get a really good looking model. Despite meeting an untimely end, it wasn't all bad luck for the tactical squad during this game against the World Eaters. They, along with Captain Katia, took the fight to the World Eaters Berserker squad. The veteran sergeant with power fist absolutely laying waste to World Eater Berserkers. The durability of these space marines is still incredible. Three plus save, two wounds each. They are in, amazing with camping objectives and we still have the free last cannon on the squad, free monthly gun, a power, sergeant with a power fist. For the faces, Bugman's Glow is a fantastic blocking colour and we could cheat with a bit of a null noil wash to make them all fit in. Speaking of null oil, the key to this scheme is null oil all over. So grab a large brush and make sure that all your models are covered in null oil. We'll be able to keep those details popping with the dry brush afterwards. While that was drying, I knew that we needed to do the bases. And again, we're using Citadel's Technical Color Sterling Mud. You get a really quick and simple effect. The dry brushes I'm using for this are again Artis Opus. You could just use regular makeup brushes. The key here is that the dry brush itself will pick out the raised edges and just add some detail to the model. We're adding a bit of depth to the blue by dry brushing a lighter colored or sky blue onto those raised areas. So the shoulder pauldrons the veteran sergeant's cloak. These guys definitely have a place in this army. This third edition inspired army, they've got real place of honor. With the rhino, they're gonna be amazing for capping objectives. Damage wise, the veteran sergeant absolutely fish the damage. We know that the last gun can hit hard D6 plus one wounds. And really, they really come together looking cool. I chose Uthwan Gray for the parchment purity seals. Again, we're just covering the details. We want to keep this scheme as simple as possible. Base rooms, of course, are black. And then my new favorite product, Micro Sol and Micro Set, just to add a little bit of extra details with the water transfers. 
I did forget to recall putting the grass tufts on. Essentially you just pluck them off and stick them to the base. I chose a really intricate water transfer for the sergeant because I thought that would look The favorite part of any episode, it's the grand reveal. Well, thanks so much for being with us for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll keep the next one coming. Might have noticed my new Reforged Army's top. Special shout out to TK for bringing these visions alive.